While some consider Washington Park to be a food desert, the neighborhood itself reveals a more complex story. There's, there's a lot of ways of defining what a food desert is. The definition that I use is the most basic one, which is if you have to travel more than a mile to purchase fresh produce. That puts the majority of Americans and communities in a food desert. The one mile radius rule is part of the USDA's definition of a food desert. This definition has two parts. One, low access. Two, low income. Or when at least 20% of residents live underneath the poverty line. While Washington Park has a whopping 55% poverty rate, the neighborhood has a pick-and-save grocery at its northeast corner within a mile of its residents. However, access still seems to be a concern. It doesn't affect us personally because I have a car and I can get to where I need to go, but a lot of people in this neighborhood do not, and it's a real negative thing. What options actually exist in the Washington Park neighborhood? Well, in a square mile area, Nine corner stores serve neighbors with quick and easy food options. So, what do people buy? I buy milk, cereal, ice cream, chips. No, I just buy like juices or little blunts or snacks. Noodles, potato chips, snacks, things like that. Yeah. Sodas, chips for the kids. It depends on what we need. Something just just quick store. This is the corner store. These corner stores, uh, for the most part, thank goodness that they're there because they do have milk, they do have eggs and stuff like that. However, there is no reason why uh, a dozen eggs should be three bucks. A less costly option, pick and save, on 35th and Meineke is a staple in the neighborhood. Pick and Save is a pretty good store. They have everything. Could you give me a few examples of things you always buy? Or? Well, most a lot of times, for sure, the meat. Just the basic general groceries. Food, like steak, chicken, ground beef, then your yeah, mashed potatoes, just general food. I live on 42nd and Ground for you, and that's why I buy my, my food in here. I mean, my dry goods, canned goods, you know, and that's it. Well, right now we finna buy the chicken. <laughs> So we're going to buy chicken and some sides at the um, the, at the hot bar. I mean, no, normally I try to eat healthy, um, but you know I would normally get the rotisserie chicken. Since we're together, we're gonna get the fried chicken. But normally I try to eat healthy. We buy pork, we buy beef, and that's that's about the only thing they buy in the neighborhood here. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't got the you know the big salad bars like in Wauwatosa and everything like that. You know, so you buy what you can get in the neighborhood. Prior to Pick and Save opening at the current location in 2007, two other prominent grocers serviced the neighborhood. There was a Sentry down at 22nd and Walnut, um, and there was uh, the original Kohl's food store. It may have recently closed at 35th and Juno. Both those, those stores were substandard to um, most stores that uh, anyone would have access to if they had a car. Um, you know, it, they smelled like spoiled milk and the shelves were half empty. No one in their right mind, um, with any other option, would bother going to those stores. The neighborhood also has other types of eateries, including Amaranth Bakery, Bus Stop Coffee Shop, and Subway. The former uses high-end ingredients and attracts patrons from across the city for lunch. In addition to prepared foods, Fresh produce is becoming more and more available through the many community gardens and for purchase through the Valite Street Community Green Market. Uh, we've had the good fortune, I should say, of an incredibly um, deep and broad uh, base of community gardeners, or growers, um, in the neighborhood, primarily uh, Hmong. Um, and so the community gardens have been fully subscribed and they're just really um, self-supporting. We keep doing that. And uh, as a small piece of trying to resolve some of the food desert uh, issue. Another piece of this issue is how to get fresh food from shopping basket to dinner table. To this end, community organization Washington Park Partners hosts cooking demonstrations with local chefs. We sat in on one of these Monday evening demonstrations led by Chef Daryl White. One of my personal goals for doing this is getting families back to the table. 
around mealtime. That's what we got to get back to as a community, recreating that family structure. In the end, will this abundance of projects and programs improve the perceived food situation in Washington Park? We've been advocates for real food or better food, for healthy food in the neighborhood for many years, but I'm afraid that we really haven't accomplished very much at all. Well, there's you know individual uh, success stories like Amaranth Bakery, but um, there ain't a lot other than that. So it's still very much an unresolved uh, public health issue. But why is this discussion of whether Washington Park is a food desert so important anyways? They say that what we eat influences our daily lives in many ways, that food choices affect our concentration, mental and physical health, sense of well-being, and alertness. Our connection to food is so intimate. Are advocates trying to save Washington Park neighbors from walking tacos and junk food Or are they trying to preserve some basic human right to good food? As we know already, the answers are never so straightforward.